the Formerly Ladies Do The Game Show with MasterChef winner <laughs> and all round plum Gemma Ayrton, no, <laughs> and manager of, manager of Seed. And yes, I am manager of Seed, Eating Disorder Support Services. And we are doing this show, Jane, because we want to bring back the fun to the kitchen and look at how food isn't just about numbers it's about the enjoyment and the interaction of cooking and also with yourself with your work with celiacs uk you know making sure that people with food intolerances are thought about and included so i am at your mercy <laughs> um what are we gonna do today we are gonna make um a smoked haddock cheesy fish cake oh my goodness <laughs> and it's really easy and um, what I want to talk to you as we go about is this is one of my absolute go-to recipes. If ever I make potatoes or mashed potatoes, I always do a bit extra so I can knock something up like this for lunch yeah. or for dinner. And it within 10 minutes of getting in the door, you can almost have a dinner, really. Or you can make them the night before and stick them in the fridge and just quickly bake them up. Well, funnily enough, Jane, <laughs> I had a potato last night. And there you go, see? <laughs> be proud of me because mum said oh why don't you just shop by it and I went no I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna make it proper you know I didn't even know you could shop by mashed potato can you oh well there you go Gemma you've taught me something today <laughs> I'm sorry I'm sorry I'll wash my mouth out with soap <laughs> I never knew there's a thing <laughs> right so you can use any white fish you like yeah if you don't like smoked fish we love smoked fish. And I just got this, yeah, the same as you. The, everybody raves about the lovely white stuff that's undyed. If you can get that and you prefer it fabulous. Yeah. My dad likes the orange stuff. <laughs> and that's what I got to live with, so. Perfect. <laughs> like childhood, like mum used to do smoked haddock um, when, when we were kids and oh my God, it was lovely. It was yeah. so simple. I love it. I think it's such a simple dish and it's not an expensive fish as well. Yeah. And it's so easy to cook. But I'm going to cook it in milk. You can do it in water if you want. My mum always cooked smoked haddock in milk, so that's what I'm going to do. Right. So we're just going to put a saucepan on or a, a, a shallow frying pan like here and put a couple of inches of milk in it. Is that pan okay? Perfect. Yeah. It really doesn't matter. Um, I'm using this one so that uh, people can see what I'm doing. And my smoked haddock's got skin on it, yours hasn't, that's fine, we can take it off when it's cooked. And just lay it down into the milk, and it won't take long to poach. Now, your piece is much thicker than mine, so mine's going to do a lot quicker, but um, I'll show you how to test it to make sure it's cooked. See, I always get this wrong. It sounds like it should be the most simplest thing, but I do get it wrong. No, you'll be fine. So have you got milk in there? Yeah, does it need to cover the whole of the top of the fish? Yeah, almost, but you can turn it over, love. If it can cover it completely, that's brilliant. And one of the things I often do, I'm not going to do it today, but another day perhaps we can show you is I'll poach my fish in this milk and make a lovely fish pie with it and use the milk to make the fish pie sauce. So today we're not going to do that. We're going to do something really quick and easy, but um, no waste if you can help it. <laughs> no, I, I totally agree. Can I, so could, if, could I keep that then, that? That milk, how if I kept that in the fridge, would it? Would it you could, it? you could keep it and freeze it. I'll do that. Um, you can freeze milk. I always, because we quite often get snowed in, because I'm in the middle of <laughs> Hampshire. Um, I always keep milk in the freezer for those days. So yeah, um, if you finish with it, a lot of people have put bay leaf or black pepper or other things in this. I'm not worried today, but you can always add your, you know, your aromats in if you want. Yeah. So we're gonna just bring that up. Jane, I've already made. I know. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> we need to get you a seed penny. We do, don't we? Definitely. I love it. Give me a second. Have you got a toothpick? Yes. Brilliant. Because toothpicks are my absolute, one of my favourite things in the kitchen, bizarrely. She's disappeared. There we go. It's not so Oh, there you go. That's very colourful. Love it. <laughs> it's still colourful. <laughs> I'm always getting told off for not wearing pinnies. Well, you just don't think 
to you. It's like you feel like it's something like you know, like from the olden days. <laughs> my nanny always had a pin in yeah. the right <laughs> I like this. And it also covers my stupid jogger bottoms and slippers. <laughs> I'm impressed. Right. I, I can't tell you how many meetings I've done over the last year wearing pajama bottoms and looking all like, like this. Never thought it would happen, but it has. A little bit. Brilliant. So while we're waiting for that to cook, mm -hmm. we're just going to put our potato, cold mashed potato. About I put about 150 grams, so I'm only going to make two. But obviously, this is one of those recipes that's quite forgiving. You don't, you can add a bit more, a bit less. I wonder, I've got like one of those little containers full. That's going to be too much, isn't it? Let's have a look how much you got. So, you know, like there's yeah, little... probably about half of that, I would have thought. Do you know what? I, I, I'm going to make a confession. <clears throat> I haven't actually got weighing scales. <laughs> I know. Right, Gemma, two things. You need to buy yourself a set of scales. <laughs> suddenly thought well last time we filmed I was at mum's I was at mum's dad's <laughs> that's all right the great thing about this recipe love is it really is one whereby you don't have to it's, it's not exact it's one of those ones that you would come home and once you've got a rough idea and I've done the bare minimum of recipe ingredients here but you could add spring onions right. if you don't want to use fish and you've got leftover broccoli or dark greens you can easily run those through it and have a, a vegetarian version. Yeah. So it's not something that has to be exact by any means. Yeah. yeah. And that's the whole beauty of cooking at home. We don't weigh things out when we cook at home, do we? No, <laughs> clearly not. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're baking, it's different. That's a slightly different thing. But... Yeah. Okay. So my fish, because it's so thin, it's almost cooked. And the way to do it is if you get, yours won't be yet, because I know yours was thicker. Yeah. But the way to do it is if you get a um, toothpick and at the thickest part of the fish, if it easily goes through, and you know that your fish is cooked. If it meets any resistance, then it's not. Right, it's not cooked yet. Now I use a toothpick all the time to test meat and specifically fish when you're cooking. Because that test works. It's not cooked. No, yours isn't cooked. I know no. yours isn't, because yours is thicker than mine. No, but I also turned it off. Oh, <laughs> that was <one's> out there. <laughs> you know, when we talked about doing this and you said you don't really cook, and I was saying, oh, you must. I do cook, I do, I do. 101, turn the cooker on. Have you been have you been enjoying the um, recent MasterChef series? Because tonight oh, I loved it, and uh, of course the finals tonight. I mean, obviously, when this goes out, this will be like a few weeks later. But I can't wait. I know, I know, and I've avoided. I know some of the press because obviously it got put back. Yeah. Um, because they have weak lead long times or whatever. It has come out in a couple of places. Bless the poor winners. But I think most people have been really good about not sharing that. So it's still a real surprise for a lot of us. Yeah, I haven't got a clue. Do you know then? No. Oh, good. I no, know. I've avoided it. I, I really try hard to avoid things like that because it, one, it spoils it for the winners, I think. But two, and it was just unforeseen circumstances. There was nothing you were bad about it. But two, I think it's not fair on the... Um, yeah, the, the show, because yeah. you know how many millions goes into making this show. You don't yeah. want to spoil it for the people who've won. But are you excited about the world opening up? I am. I've got, it's my birthday this week, Gemma. Oh, I'm so celebrating so today. Yeah, so um, I'm actually going to my first pub on Friday. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah. I'm going out actually tomorrow night. I'm going to a restaurant, Al Fresco. Oh, fabulous. really nice. Ruby's really coming, well, of course, my dog. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I am. It'll be wonderful. And I'm so happy for my friends in hospitality because it's just been so awful for them. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Wednesday, is it May 17th that we can go inside dining? Yeah. I think? Not long, not long, darling, not long. No, definitely not long. Right, am I keeping you up? Am I behind? 
Yeah, so you've got your mashed potato. Hold on two secs. Um, yeah, I think my fish is cooked. Fantastic. So take it out using your thing and just put it on a plate and leave it to one side. Mine has got a little bit of skin on, so I'm literally just going to peel the skin away. It should come off the fish really easy. And if you look at it, Gemma, it should just be nice and translucent and flake away. Now, did you get filleted? Beautiful, yes. Yes? All lovely and flaky? Yeah. Brilliant. So we just I'll take, I'm just taking the skin off mine, which comes off really easy. It just peels off. Yeah. That can go for my pussy cats. Hang on. So we've got our fish. Ready? Yeah. Do you have a masher or do you have some little rubber gloves or a fork? Uh, all, all of the above. Okay, well let's just use a fork because I think we'll be okay because we're not doing a lot here. And just put your mashed potato in a big bowl. Yep. There you go, yay! I've done mine in a glass bowl today so you can see. And we're going to put in, a, no I literally just use this stuff which I keep all the time. It's grated cheddar, grated mozzarella. I know, well, you know, it helps. So this is a grated four, four cheese mix. So it's Perfect. Anything right. like that. I think you want something with a bit of mozzarella in it because it Hot gives the stretch. Yeah. We're going to put that in. How much was that again? 50 grams of each. Right. Exactly. So just a good handful. Yes, this is 250 gram pack. Right, so just a nice big handful. That's perfect. And that's the way I'd normally cook this. I would literally be, <laughs> boom. This also is a fantastic recipe if you've got children who don't really like fish. Yeah. Because the way I got a couple of mine eating fish is I actually made these in fish finger shapes. Right. And just told them they were cheesy fish fingers. Yeah. So, have you got some frozen peas there? Yep. Fantastic. Um, now, we probably need to blanch those just quickly to make sure... So about a good handful again. Have you still got your boiling milk? Yep. Right, put the peas in the milk. Oh. <laughs> and just quickly bring them up to the boil so they're cooked. Don't waste the milk. We could have stuck them in with the haddock actually, but I... I love the no waste thing. I'm so Exactly. I hate food waste. Um, I think growing up, my mum and dad genuinely didn't have an awful lot. Yeah. And um, everything was home cooked, which is such a blessing. But by the same token, nothing was wasted. Yeah. So I learned how to make stocks and things because mum always used to do that. And I know your mum cooked in a very traditional way too. So last night I did, um, I had some broccoli. Yeah. And I kept the water for some stock for next yeah. And to make some gravy with yeah. or whatever. I know. I, I am, um, my freezer is full of stuff like that. I love it, I love it. Yeah, it's the way I think no waste is, I think everybody's realizing it's it's the right way to eat. Absolutely. Um, because we don't want to be filling everything up and throwing everything away all the time. Oh, especially not, you know, not at the moment when you think, you know, I know there's so many like difficulties all around the world, but when you think about COVID and the food banks and, yeah. you know, all of those people who are struggling, like it, it does put things in perspective, doesn't it? Totally, totally love, 100% how lucky we are. Right, your peas should be done. Yep, they are. So you can either strain them out or use a um, slotted spoon to take them out and just put them in with your potato and cheese mixture. You're gonna put those in there. As I say, you can put, if you've got a bit of dark green or um, broccoli or whatever they can all go into this just chop them up a bit small and that can all go in as well yeah just mix them through with an egg you put the egg in the in the mix yeah because yeah. that's what's going to hold it all together and stop it all falling apart okay and i'm going to put a big sprinkle of black pepper in mine yeah um now, I'm presuming that when you made your mashed potato, you seasoned it. I did, and I put a little bit of whole grain mustard in. 
Perfect. Oh, that sounds that that is one of my favorite things to do with this fish. Is yeah. That. So we're just going to mix that round. So be careful about the salt because you've got fish. The fish is smoked fish, so it's naturally salty. Yeah. But then you've also got um you've got salt in your potato already. Yeah. So I'm not so sure you need salt, but a good pinch of pepper. And okay. honestly, if you've got any parsley or something that you want to sling in this, do it. You know? Yeah. But we're just going to keep it plain because I wanted to show people how easy it was. And then you're going to just flake your fish gently in. We want to try and keep the, the shape of the, you know, we don't want to make it mushy. Yeah. So just flake it gently through. And while you're doing this, it's a good time to just check to make sure there is no little bones in there. Particularly if you're doing this for children, I would go through it on the plate beforehand just to make sure, because even with filleted fish, you do occasionally get a fish bone and we don't want that in children's food or anybody's food actually. Yeah. This hat has broken, Gemma, look. <laughs> What's broken? This hat. Oh my God. Well, this is real life, Jay. Everything going to fill it pieces in the house. This is real life. I know. This works beautifully with prawns. And as I say, if you've got a bit of haddock or cod or anything like that, it's a really lovely dish. So you're just gonna mix it through. Um, and I'm hoping you can still see the fish. Yeah, it tastes good now, I think. <laughs> so you oh, wanna see wow. those lovely fishy bits. And then we're gonna get a plate. Now, use these little rubber gloves if you want, if you don't mind, if you don't like getting your hands in things. I don't mind. I don't. I've got, and we've got dogs, we get used to this. Exactly. <laughs> and I've got children too, they're yeah. used to the mess. Yeah. But I think um, the amount here should make a good two or three fish think, cakes. Yeah, I think this will be three. Exactly. It's very forgiving recipe. There's no exact quantities on this. Yeah. So we're just gonna, what we're gonna do now is form them with your hands into a nice burger shape, really. A nice proper fish cake shape. My hair back. There you go. So, yeah. Yeah. Almost like a mini burger. And as you say, we've got enough for three here. Um, good sized portions, I think. Do you know what else this is really fun? Perfect, absolutely perfect. This is really fun to go in, bizarrely, a burger bun. Oh, I can imagine. So, you know, like a brunch burger. Yeah. Um, with a poached egg, beautiful. Oh, don't get me started on poached eggs. <laughs> <laughs> That's for another day. I know. Well, I was thinking that we could actually do a bit of a, a masterclass on eggs and things because oh. I know a lot of people, it's a, it's a thing that seems so easy, but sometimes isn't. I think it's like the fundamentals, like when I watched you on, on MasterChef and like the, the fundamentals that you learn by watching the show, you know, yes. about how you, your basics of like your celery and your onions and just all sorts of stuff that you just think, and then like you said, the poach of, of an egg, and you think, oh. But Pete, I often used to make these up for the kids for, for dinner, for instance. They'd come in and they were off fishing to go swimming or something. Yeah. And this is something I could make up, have it literally have on the plate in front of them. One of them eats them with baked beans, which to me is really yuck, but it's dinner and there's nothing yeah. wrong with a baked bean, you know? Yeah. I'm just going to put this in and wash my hands. I think I've actually got the ball there. Uh -huh. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, That's sure. Nice. It's more sorted. But actually, would, would these, if I only did two, for instance, like would they keep for tomorrow to do again or can I do all four? You can do that or you can freeze them. Oh, amazing. But we're going to, what they call, then this is the other thing I try. So when you talk about the, the celery and the carrot, yeah, they always talk about terms of it being a sofrito and you think this is something posh and actually it's just chopped celery, carrot, onion and a few herbs. Right. And this is the same. So we're going to do something called panne, which is breadcrumbing. And I think sometimes these terms can put people off because they think it's something extraordinary or hard, and it's yeah. not. Yeah. Gonna, this should, to make your life easier, you could do them straight away. 
but we're going to put them in the fridge for about 20 minutes half an hour to set up yeah bread crumb them fry them lunch <laughs> okay brilliant. brilliant now let's put them in the fridge she says um we have fried crumbs yep just put them in a bowl in a bowl can i do it in these little things yeah of course perfect takeaway containers are absolutely perfect for this i presume that's a takeaway container yeah 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 i keep mine and use them for the same but Got some of the is it okay to use the like zesty lemon and cracked black pepper perfect yeah we'll talk about you know how you can use different things to coat them yeah okay and then a little bowl of flour it doesn't matter what flour it doesn't no plain flour self-raising whatever you oh, got. really yeah. oh amazing no difference at all on this it's whatever's in the cupboard. Well, I do have the um, normal flour, but this is the first one that I've found, so that's fine. I've got gluten-free flour, so, you know, it really doesn't matter. Do you know one thing I have noticed, though, when I've gone for the ingredients, obviously I don't worry about the gluten-free side yeah. of things personally, but I have noticed more and more there is such, like, there are now aisles dedicated. Yeah. It's really, really good, isn't it? It is. It's much better. When they think that it's between two and eight in 100 who are probably celiac. Wow. It's one of the most prevalent genetically passed diseases in the white population, white European. Right. A bit like the cell seems to be in Asian and Mediterraneans, yeah. um, the similar thing. So it's ever so prevalent, but it's a lot, a lot of it goes undiagnosed. So. Yeah, no, I can imagine. Really sad to be honest. Okay, now we're not worried about getting our fingers dirty, are we? No, no, I'm popping <laughs> yeah, that on the back. On. So you want to put your egg in your bowl as well. Let's do that before we start. Crack an egg or two. I think I'll probably have to do two, will I? Because I've got, I've got yes. quite big then... eggs. <laughs> not, not. Not your one. <laughs> Clearly not. Right, okay. And you're just whisking them up, yeah? Yeah. And we're ready to start. So, do you want to do something? I'll do it. There we go. So, whilst Gemma does that, we're back and we're going to finish off our cheesy smoked halibut fish cakes, which I'm really excited about. And I have a very hungry teenager hanging behind to eat them. So, <laughs> the first thing we've done is we've got a bowl with some breadcrumbs. I'm using Mrs. Crimble's gluten free breadcrumbs. Gemma's got some lemon and cracked black pepper ones, I think. Um, I prefer the panko style breadcrumbs just because they puff up and go a bit crunchier. But if you've got the old fashioned orange ones, it really doesn't matter. If you're gluten free, you can use polenta as well. Oh, really? Um, yeah, polenta works really well to fry things, it gives it a lovely crunchy coat. Uh, I've got some. Uh, gluten-free plain flour. Gemma's using whatever flour's in her cupboard. Again, any flour, self-raising plain, it doesn't matter. And we we start just just mixed up a couple of eggs in a bowl. Yeah. Ooh. And then I'm going to put. Uh, I've got a frying pan here, a shallow frying pan with about half an inch of oil, an inch of oil in the bottom, because we're going to shallow fry these. I always get confused with oils, Jane. Like, is there a particular type of oil that's best for this type of yes use a vegetable oil or sunflower oil for something like this so i tend not to use olive oil because when it gives it a strong flavor yeah and also if you're frying at quite high temperatures olive oil breaks down goes very bitter right, okay. so, uh, olive oil is better for dressings or frying where you're not in you're not needing it real heat you probably need a bit more than that to so come up about halfway down your fish cake yeah Halfway up your fish cake. Oh, really? Yeah. We're going to do these frying. If you want, you can make them, put them on a little uh, greaseproof paper or an oil tray and put them in the oven for about 20, 25 minutes. Got you. Time today, we're going to fry them. And the other thing I said that I do quite often with these is I make them into, if you've got children who don't eat fish, I think I might have said earlier, yeah. you can 
them into fish finger shapes. It's a great way to get children starting to eat fish. So we're going to turn our pan on just so it comes up nice and to a nice temperature whilst we're panning this. We're yeah, going to call it an old fashioned <laughs> We're going to break from it. It's just that fresh, fresh chef's word. Sorry. I did it. I did it. I used the wrong word. No, okay. you don't. There you go. Now, these have been in the fridge because it makes it so much easier to do. You can do them straight away, but they're very soft and it makes it quite difficult. And if you don't mind your kids getting great, dirty, these are a great ones to do. So we're going to take our fish cake and coat it in flour. Now, it's good if you can just use one hand for this. She's used to, so use one hand for the flowery bit and one hand for the eggy bit, yeah? Then you don't get so... Okay. so cover them all in flour, gently, just toss them around. Yeah. Very gently. You can put the flour on. And then... Then in the egg, cover them in the egg. Yeah. And then in the breadcrumbs. So your little takeaway containers are perfect to do these because yeah. they're nice and shallow and they're long. I used up all my takeaway containers making food for my mother-in-law. <laughs> Bless you. So, uh, and just pat the breadcrumbs in so that it's really well coated. Yeah. You can double do them if you like it really crunchy, back in the egg and back in the breadcrumb, but I don't think we need to. Okay. Your... This is a great one if you have slightly older children and you don't mind them getting a bit mucky because yeah. I think putting kids' hands into food is one way to really engage them when they cook things themselves, especially if it's something they're not particularly keen on. Yeah. Um, you know, this is a really, you might end up with a, we used to end up with all sorts of different shapes and sizes. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Good. Because yeah. these are. <laughs> That was for the kids, Gemma. <laughs> oh, dear me. Now, if you want, you could just flour them, but I think the breadcrumbs just make it such a much nicer. The textural thing of eating yes. is so important, as well as, you know, if you can have a bit of crunch and softness, it just makes life very much more pleasant. Yeah. Right, so there we go. Let me wash my hands. I'm, I'm nearly there. No rush. Oh, look at these. Have you ever made anything like this? Not fish cakes. Good. I've done homemade burgers before. Yeah. So like the same, you know, obviously with the binding of the egg and, and all of that. And I do, um, I do like, um, you know, like turkey or pork escalope. Is it escalope? Yeah, and just breadcrumb them. That's perfect. Is it escalope or escalope? Which one is it? How do you pronounce it? Escalope, I say, but then I'm, I've got the London accent. <laughs> it's probably not the posh way, the proper way to say it. <laughs> oh, no, I don't say anything proper. Uh, sometimes it's a bit intimidating when you're trying, you're trying to think of something. Thing and you know what you want to say, but you're not quite sure the correct pronunciation, particularly on kitchens. Oh, God, I bet. Some kitchens I've been in, nearly everybody is Italian or French, and they're all talking a different language, and I don't speak any other language. <laughs> not from London. <laughs> well, my, my worst one was when I once said to somebody at this real swanky do, have you got any more canapes? <laughs> Excuse me, what? Like, you know, canapes. <laughs> Like the other day and I was like, oh yeah, that one too. That'll do. <laughs> right, let me just wash my hands. Brilliant. Oh, I love it. They are difficult, are they? And uh, as I say, make them with prawns or any white fish. Add in a bit of chopped broccoli or some greens. Yeah. Um, bit of onion if you like. Amazing. Can you check your oil? And what I want you to do is to go pick a pinch full of your panko breadcrumbs. Yeah. And the way to check your oil, if it's the right heat, 
is you put it in. If it comes to the top spitting and that is too hot, you need to turn it down. If it gently sinks and comes to the top bubbling, you've got the right temperature. If it just sinks and doesn't bubble, it's too cold. So that's how you check if your oil is the right temperature to cook. Oh, it's not gone mad. It's, it's just on the top bubbling. Perfect. No, I'm probably asking, it's just a tiny bit hotter. Because you want that oil hot enough to seal it, but you don't want to burn it so it doesn't heat all the way through. Yeah. And that's the ideal way. You can test it. Um, if you've got a deep fat fryer, it's 180, and you can use a thermometer if you want, but most people don't. So the way to do it is get a breadcrumb or a bit of your panko breadcrumbs, drop it in. If it comes to the top gently sizzling, you know it's the right heat. Wow. And remember when you put things in, it's going to cool off. So if you overfill yeah. your pan, you're going to end up with soggy fish cakes. Oh, so I really want that. Yeah. Oh, and we're going to carefully, if you've got a fish slice or a spatula, one of these. Uh, yeah. Quick. Just carefully lower them into the pan. And be careful about this. And this is not the time to have kids involved in your cooking, obviously. So we're just going to do one or two at a time. I'm just going to cook one because I don't want to cook two and then not eat them. Yeah. And you can hear it just gently sizzling, I'm hoping. I said monster once, Gemma, you've got to eat it. It's really happy at dinner. But I think this with some, uh, as I say, a poached egg, Maybe some crusty bread and a lovely salad. It's a really nice dinner or lunch. <laughs> They're lovely. That's proper Yorkshire size cake, darling. <laughs> I love that. What do you mean? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Don't be sorry. That's proper. That's what we want. Well, it's like when, when somebody comes around, like when we were growing up, and mum would be like, Oh, just come around and I'll just do a few nibbles. And it was a full on buffet, like fed the 5,000. And that's just, it's just a way like you can never give too much to somebody. It's yeah. so funny. Well, that's how I grew up. My mum exactly. always cooked so much and it's still, it's wonderful. Yeah. But I'm the same. I have this phobia of people leaving my house hungry. So yeah. <laughs> always too much food. Love it. But that's the way it should be. And that's the whole thing with food, isn't it? The generosity of it. And yeah. the love if you've got people around Gemma and you want to do something a bit nice for them to have as a starter, Please, you can yeah. roll these into nice little balls. Oh wow. And fry them off. Yeah. And just add them with a bit of uh, nice cheese, mozzarella or parmesan over the top. Yeah. And it's a great starter. Amazing. So it's one of those, I love multitask recipes. Oh. Don't, the thing is when you're frying, if you keep moving things around all the time, it doesn't cook. But you can see if you start to look when it's turning a lovely deep golden brown around the edges. And that's when you want to flip it. Yeah, I think mine's going. Yeah, and it's holding together really well. Seems to be. Just be careful when you take hold, turn things over in the frying pan. You're not splashing. So, we're nearly there. Do you want to poach an egg as well, or are you okay? You want that egg? Can we poach an egg? Okay. I think my um, I think mine's done. No, it's not me. You want that egg? Let's have a look. I don't want it to burn. Yeah, turn your heat down a bit because it needs to be, I can't see from here, but what you need to do is cook it slowly so that you get it hot all the way through. Because if you cook it too quickly, you're going to end up with it being cold and that lovely cheese not being gooey and melty. Yeah, the problem is with mine is I haven't got a temperature control. No, I haven't either, but I think it's a case of practice and also, um, I do a quick pick up. Softly bubbling, I should say, not fiercely. Yeah, it's softly bubbling. It's a lovely golden. Well, I, I've got to make a confession. I, I kind of 
just on the verge of burning the other side, but this one's coming good. Yeah. Okay. But that's okay, isn't it? I, you know. Yeah, but you can turn it back over, love. If you think one side's not quite done, just turn it back over because it needs to be that dark golden colour. Oh, good. I haven't burnt it. I thought it was meant to be like a golden brown. No. Oh my god, no, I haven't burnt it. Yay! I it, thought I burnt it because it should have been like a a really light, you know, like what you expect from oh you know what I mean, dirty like where it's a golden beautiful brown. <laughs> it's absolutely not. No, it's it's home cooking, love. And you know, it's not all about everything looking perfect. It's about being able to get something really tasty and yummy on the table and um you know, I think the joy of hand cooking is that. Yeah. There's two very distinct types of cooking. There's the cooking I do in restaurants and sort of, you know, things. And then there's how I cook at home. And I have to say, I love my home cooking. I bet. It's what gives me the most pleasure is feeding people. Yeah. At home. <laughs> yeah. Do your kids get involved in, in cooking with you? Sorry? Do your kids get involved in cooking at home with you? Yes, all the time. Uh, two of them are really, really, really good cooks. They can all cook. And actually, Harry, I just told you he's moved into London. I've sent him off with a really nice knife. And what they've all done is they rely on me. And then when they move away, they eat rubbish the first couple of weeks. And they're like, Mom, how do I cook that? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. I bet. And I think that's what we want to do as well. We want to encourage, like, cooking together with your partner or your partner or your, you know, your husband or your kids. Like, we want to sort of encourage that. Doing that's it 100% the joy of cooking. Yeah. It, it's a social thing. And I think it's such a part of our humanity to break bread together and wanting to be together and eat together. And that's one of the hardest things that's been about lockdown. You know you live on your own. Yeah. It's such a thing that you want to do. And when you're denied that, either because you can't eat because you have something, an eating disorder, yeah. or because you have an allergy to food, or you, you choose not to eat something because you're a vegetarian. Yeah. You, I think that's just the upsetting thing. Food should always be about being inclusive. It's one of the most basic things that we have as people. Yeah, absolutely. If you have a little bit of kitchen towel, um, hang on to your sex. That's definitely done. A little bit of kitchen towel to put these on as you take them out the fryer. Yeah. Then that just helps soak up any excess oil you don't want floating around on your plate. Them. And I think just going back to that point, Jane, I think that's why we wanted to do this because obviously, you know, there's still there's still a long way to go until the world opens up again. But the reality is that not everybody, like myself, lives with, with somebody. I mean, Ruby can't cook. Do you know what I mean? My dog. Um, but this is a way of being able to do it with us. You know, it is. And all these recipes can just be doubled up or made yeah. in families or whatever. It's not difficult, you know? Yeah. And the other thing is, I'm hoping that nothing we've done, maybe most of it is financially accessible. Yeah. Because I'm so aware of how much you say people have been in food banks and stuff, and you can look at something and think, okay, I, I can't, I don't have that, but I can swap this in or something. Yeah, absolutely. Asbestos fingers here, so don't do this. <laughs> is how, look at this, right, only one cooked. Look at that cheese. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Is that what you want to eat? Look. Oh my God. Mine's still a bit too hot for me to try that. I have asbestos fingers, Gemma, don't worry. Really? Yes, it's years of being in kitchens. <laughs> All my kids are sort of, Mom, how'd you pick that up? But I wanted to show you how gorgeous that can be with that lovely cheese. I right. any way to get anybody to eat anything is dripping cheese, really. Oh, God, yeah. Right, let me try. Oh, I think that's really good. Oh, Here you go. <laughs> Look, mine's a little bit darker than yours. I'm not going to lie, but I don't mind because I love I loved that. I think you had your fat just up a little bit hot. But it doesn't... Let me, well, I'll tell you. I don't think you'll put flavour, love. I think you'll still be. I won't lie to you. I don't think it's going it, to, it's going to taste burnt. <laughs> Go eat. Oh, no, that's a Oh, my God. 
oh wow and you know what i love you know you said it when when we started the recipe you was like don't don't make the fish too bitty so that you lose the flakes you can see the amazing like are still intact look at that and then that's it and you get those lovely big chunks of fish in with the thing oh yeah that's so isn't it it's just comfort on a plate that is it put prawns in it put broccoli oh. um, and you know you can even use tin tuna no you can really no, tin tuna or salmon if you if you want you can use tin fish in this if you want oh my goodness jane thank you so much yet again for just opening my eyes having a laugh with me i love this i so enjoy it and sometimes you just need a bit of escapism don't you you know you just an hour or so in the kitchen just just forget and have fun and enjoy so thank you so much everybody out there make sure you are subscribed to the youtube channel for seed make sure you do follow jane devonshire who is wonderful and also look at her books and a brilliant work that she does with celiacs uk because it's so important that everybody has education about everything that could be thrown our way and also we will jane be at some point doing a live cook along so watch this space we'll <laughs> get into the swing of it i don't know when that's gonna happen <laughs> the work you do Gemma I can't thank you enough yeah. oh bless you I love you bye darling bye my love